I'm at a point right now where it's pretty difficult to keep my excitement back and be quote-unquote professional. And I know the title is a bit aggressive, but... Uh... Get my point? Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today on the menu we have the Incarnate Latron, an absolutely amazing weapon that you must get. I'm gonna be going through an endgame setup because these Incarnate weapons are not exactly new player friendly. That said though, we are gonna be going through everything. What talents to pick or evolutions, how to build the weapon, how does it actually function and what kind of results you can expect. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the Incarnate Latron. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our regular free shots. The Latron Incarnate version handles just the same as the Latron. You're gonna have to get headshots, however, to fill the Incarnate bar. That is the brand new bar underneath my crosshairs. Essentially, that one appears when you implement the adapter. Now, you can go Incarnate form with any level of charge, but I would recommend you go full ham. Now, when you go in card and form, the projectiles of this weapon transform from an ordinary hit scan attack, semi automatic, to semi automatic bouncy explosions. Take a look at these. Absolutely freaking insane. Now, upon contact, these will be detonating in a 4 meter radius with a drop off of only, only 20%. And these puppies bounce they're gonna be bouncing roughly four times or four seconds and then they're gonna be detonating and this can make for some very interesting gameplay when it comes to tight corridors have a look every time the projectile bounces it explodes every single time so if you can get it to bounce between targets you're gonna be getting yourself a truck and a half worth of damage plus one because you see the projectile will be bouncing off of targets so you what you can do is do the bizarre shot Shoot at an enemy's feet, get an impact right before, get the damage on, then it bounces off the enemy, another impact, you get how that one works. Therefore, you can stack yourself multiple explosions in the same group of enemies, which is absolutely insane. And the weapon deals a truck and a half worth of damage. As for the magazine, the magazine is not huge on this one. Let's go full in card and form. By the way, if you switch to normal form with a remaining charge, you will lose that charge. Just a couple of headshots on the target and I'm already full in bar and the magazine size is 40, my friends. More than plenty to annihilate a couple of maps worth of enemies. And take a look at that beautiful projectile. It is, by all intents and purposes, fantastic. When it comes to recoil, I mean, it, it, it's not bad enough that it's so amazing. It has no recoil whatsoever, so actually playing with the weapon can be extremely easy. And this would be the maximum rate of fire without any mods. Now, let's have a look at those talents. You do that by visiting Cavalero in the Zeraman 10 0, and unfortunately, this is not very effective. We would need something a bit faster, dear developer. Latron Prime on involving weapons. Talent level 1, essentially, this one just enables the evolutions. Level 2 is when things get very interesting. Evolution 1 will be your best in slot. This is Riddled Target, increases damage by 6. This is a base amount, so all of your mods are going to be playing off of this. Also, on Puncture Status Effect. 25% multi-shot for 8 seconds, stacks up 4 times. This one will be up 100% of the time. And I know what you're gonna say. Hold on, dude. Puncture on an explosion damage? What gives? Yeah, puncture damage on explosions. Now, I don't know if you notice, but when you're going in Karnan form, essentially your damage doubles, but your damage will be split between two damage sources. First, you got the projectile making contact with a target, and this one deals impact damage, and secondly, you're gonna be having that explosion, which deals roughly 75% of the damage. Fall off again, 20% with a range of 4, and that glorious puncture damage. That said, though, you're also gonna be getting a boost in critical chance and critical multiplier as well. The second evolution is called Swift Punishment, increases damage also by 6, with sprint speed 1.2 or higher, 30% direct damage per status type affecting the target and that is pretty huge because you see when you go in card and form your projectiles become explosions and as you know condition overload like effects for primary weapons or secondary weapons i'm talking about the galvanized aptitude or galvanized shot for secondaries don't really work with explosions but again the multi-shot is going to be here primary this is what i recommend you go for riddled target next at evolution numero tres 60% weapon recoil, magazine capacity by 15, and marksman focus minus 30% zoom. The thing about the prime, 
it's got this nasty zoom and a lot of players dislike this nasty zoom so you can go like so this is more of a usability tree i'm gonna be going with marksman hand it's minus 60 percent weapon recoil which is the same exact mod you can put in your excel slot and there's really not a whole lot of other options to put in that excel slot either but this is a bit of a throwaway talent the increased magazine capacity only really helps you in the normal form as it has no effect and it's in card and form so my friends dealer's choice whatever you want is not really gonna make all that much of a difference either the 60 percent weapon recoil or the extended volley i mean this one still has an advantage simply because you don't need to unlock the excel slot anymore once again it is entirely up to you finally the most impactful talent right actually the most impactful talent usually for these new incarnate weapons are at level two but this one, critical parallel, 24% critical chance and 0.2 critical multiplier. My friends, these modify the base values of the weapon, which means all of your mods are going to be playing off of this. One note that I do want to make, in case you didn't see my Latron Wraith versus Latron Prime, these talents are not the same values for the Wraith. The Wraith is going to be getting slightly more damage to make up for the fact that it has a smaller base damage than the Prime. Deadhead 100% to headshot multiplier, which is fantastic if you plan to build a weapon for its normal form. If you want to give it the Felarx treatment and simply go for that marksman experience, go for Deadhead. If not, when it comes to the explosions, considering how the bounciness works, you gotta go for shooting for the feet or feet shots. Feet shots? Foot shots? I, I don't even know. Shoot again the ground right before their feet, so you get double the explosion damage. Flensing spikes. I still don't know what flensing means. Removes 20% of enemy armor per puncture status effect. This works. This works for the primary weapon mode or the normal weapon mode, and it works for the incarnate form as well. But the thing is, you don't really need it, especially if you got some other means of removing enemy armor. But if you don't have other means of removing enemy armor and you plan to stay in, I don't know, to level cap on something like the brand new game mode, you should go for flensing spikes. For the time being, Critical Parallel is always good. Unlike the Bratton, for example, the Incarnate Latron does not build the same you would build the Latron Prime. There are a few key differences that you need to be aware of. So what we're going to be doing next is addressing Double Tap. You see, Double Tap is absolutely insane. This essentially made the Latron Prime viable again. Check this one out. On hit, 20% bonus damage on the next shot for 2 seconds, but stacks up 20 times outside of Conclave. Oh, wow. That is insane, isn't it? But the good question would be, hold on, does it work in incarnate form or not? Long story short, it does not. But what I'm going to be showing you is a bit of a UI bug or how the UI actually treats double tap just to make sure you don't think that it actually works because some confusion is already running around. So going for headshot, check out my double tap. My double tap is stacking, such stacking and the multi shot from the talent. Fantastic. I'm going in incarnate form and look at my buff bar. I still retain the double tap benefit, it's stuck at 0-1. So you might believe that this is some sort of a snapshot effect, right? So I'm enjoying the damage now, fantastic! Yeah, it's still there, awesome! No, it's just a visual thing, it's just a UI thing. You're not getting the damage benefit from double tap. And if that would have happened, that would have made the weapon even more powerful than it already is. And at the current time, well, if you read the title, you know that this is the new AoE King. Although there is one weapon that was released in the same incarnate rotation as the Latron, which can give it a real run for its money. And if you followed my top picks for incarnate adapters recommendation, then you know exactly which weapon that is. But let's talk build. This is an endgame setup without a Riven. I'm going to be showcasing with and without a Riven just so you can see exactly what a Riven can do on this weapon because the dispo is sky high and I'm not sure if you stocked up on Incarnate Rivens before the update hit. Here's the thing, this is not a new player friendly weapon. You can't get your hands on the Incarnate Adapters if you're a new player or a newish player or a casual Tenno. But if you want to see how the Latron Prime should be built from a more casual perspective, link the cards right now for a full and detailed guide on that. As for veterans, you should already have all of these mods. You got a couple of options, so let's go through them. First of all, Galvanized Aptitude, no. This is a mistake when it comes to explosive weapons because its damage benefit will not be granted to the radial attack. I tested this one and I can confirm it does not work on the explosion for the Latron Prime, but it will be working fine on everything that is not an explosion. The normal form and the projectile making physical contact with a target. But the main draw of the Latron Prime is going to be 
those explosions. Galvanized Chamber, a no-brainer, of course, critical chance and critical damage with delay and vital sense. We also got Prime Firestorm. This is worth when the explosion is this powerful and your drop-off is this small. With Prime Firestorm, you're going from 4 to 5.8. And even though that might not sound like a lot, in actual gameplay, it makes one huge change. And I'm going to be calling Prime Firestorm mandatory on this build. Of course, we also got Vital on the Weapon with Malignant Force and Prime Cryo Rounds. 160, 60, and of course, the 165 from Prime Cryo Rounds. And this is the basic build. Of course, Hunter Munitions needs to be here. Check out the critical chance. Check out the critical chance 204% with critical delay alone. Critical Moldly 7.9x. Absolutely. Mwah. Beauty flay, beauty flay, my friends. This is what you're looking at because the base for the incarnate forms are sky high. 68% with 3.6x provided you picked up the correct talents. Of course, primary merciless, we're gonna be shooting for feet. Now let's see what the weapon can do with a build such as this. No Warframe boss, no anything of the sort. We're gonna go straight for level 165 simply because the weapon is that good. Now when it comes to incarnate weapons, one of the caveats is the fact that hey, I gotta stack them up, I gotta transform them, but with just a couple of shots, that was free shots thanks to all the multi-shot, I'm already full incarnate. I wanna show you what this weapon can do without even going incarnate. You see, the weapon was never really a slouch and you can take out high level targets in just a couple even without its incarnate form. Slash values can reach easily 100,000 without any issue whatsoever. Now keep in mind that these targets right here will not be benefiting from the Bane mod I have equipped. These are the Exogogstad and these are the Grenier faction. They will not be getting affected by the faction mod that aligns to the Corrupted. Take a look. Go Incarnate. How's that? How is that, my friends? And bear in mind what you just saw was the weapon not fully stacked up. This is not full power. I'm just warming up. It's absolutely insane. No ribbon, nothing too fancy, and you can achieve these test results rather easily. But hold on, I'm still stacking. This is what happens when I enter the Bane mod into the equation. The more bounce you get, the more crazy it is. I'm just aiming slightly for the That's a single shot. Look at that. Again, the Bane mod has no effect on these targets, and it's just its just absolutely freaking insane, man. This weapon's power level is, is bonkers, honestly. When it comes to AoE weapons in the game, there is no better AoE weapon at this point. Current kings of AoE, let's say Brahma Zar, have been hamstringed by recent changes done by the developer. This one, however, doesn't really care all that much about the ammo. If you lose your ammo, you just go back, restart your incarnate form, and I mean, look... Not a problem. I still had 29 magazine, by the way, on the explosion. There, a couple of shots. I'm back to normal. Even kill that. Look at this. This is insane. This is silly. And I'm not even close to full power just yet. You want to see something a bit more powerful? Well, why don't we have a look at a Riven mod? Yes. And then we're going to talk Warframe buffs and possible build variations for it. Again, I like to stress out the fact that Firestorm is extremely important on this one. It's not a huge range, but the falloff is extremely important, only 20%. If you get a Riven mod, as per usual, priority is going to be for multi-shot. Your second priority, considering the base critical chance, is critical damage. And you can go for something like so. Take a look at this one. Multi-shot, critical damage, and cold. If you're not going to be making the Viral Elemental combo on the weapon, that also frees up a couple of mod slots so you can put something powerful and use your Vulpa file to apply Viral or use your Secondary, use your Epitaph, especially with a brand new Arcane. So you can go for an approach such as that. In my case, I'm going to be doing the following. Boom, boom, and boom. Take a look at this. Now I got the Riven on. This one offers a lot of multi-shot 100%, a lot of critical damage and cold damage as well, which essentially kind of makes up for its own slot. Now I want to point out the fact that Bane mods are kind of dropping from gray simply because the brand new game mode, the Circuit Steel Path, you're not going to get full benefit out of a Bane mod. So if Bane mods are not your thing, you can go for something like flat damage with Serration because you see you don't have a whole lot of sources of flat damage here. The only source is Primary Merciless, so you can simply replace it like so. You don't need to go for a Bane mod, and as you know, on the Exo Goog, it had no effect whatsoever. So we're gonna be going like so. Oh, and in the Exo slot, of course, minus recoil or whatever else, it doesn't really matter. You can even leave that one locked if you're low on resources. Spawn the same targets one more time. 
I love this ribbon, it's fantastic. And don't worry, all those free glorious ribbons, none of them are mine, as per usual. Go for headshot, I mean... Look at this. This is just a weapon. I'm not even going in card and form. This is what you're looking at. Let's go in card and form, though. I mean... And I'm not even stacked. And I'm not even stacked. It's absolutely hilarious. Look at this. Look at this. It's it's beautiful. It's stupendous. It's glorious. I am having such a good time playing with this weapon. But I hear what you're saying. Oh, come on, dude. Shooting standing still targets? That's hardly sportsmanlike, don't you think? But it's so fun. But it's so goddamn fun. Anyway, let's head on over to the path of steel. Welcome to the void my friends and as you can see it's quite easy to get charged when you get headshots and it's easier to get headshots when you're using daddy rev because of the crowd control element. I'm gonna go in card and form. I think the stalker is coming or something. Look at that. Uh, honestly, oh it's a red fail instead. it It's really hard for the weapon not to one shot everything that stands before it. I think that was the capture target. Wait, was that a capture target? I don't know, probably was a capture. Oh, it was the capture target. It got one shot. It blown the kingdom come. This is what you can do in close corridors. Do you even trick shot? Do you even trick shot? That's my question to you, especially if you're playing something like this. Oh, was that red fail? Must have been red fail. Oh, the target is dying. Hold on, don't reset me. Don't reset me. Here's something I wanted to do. Since I'm going to be getting my Vital Procs from the Panzer Group of Isla or from whatever else, maybe a secondary epitaph or something of the sort, I wanted to build cold on the weapon and use primary frostbite for critical damage and multi-shot. Can you spell overpowered? That would be insane. Problem is, the explosion deals heat damage by default and if you put cold on the weapon, it's going to be making blasts. So, there is that. But you can go normal form and then go uh, in card and form if you want to go that route. It's totally doable. What else can I show you, my friends? The weapon is absolutely insane. I love the trick shots. This is the most powerful area of effect weapon in the game right now. With a bit of an asterisk, simply because we haven't got access to all the incarnate weapons just yet. Beautiful, fantastic, highly recommend. Enjoy Steel Path, because you are gonna wreck it like nobody's business. Bounce, my friends. Bounce. But here's the thing. One good bounce deserves another. Can you say Mirage Prime? Now that was just the weapon by itself, without tricks, but now my friends, it's time for all of the tricks. All of the tricks with Lady Mirage Prime. Of course, grossy projection against heavy armor targets is a no-brainer. What about those arcanes though? Arcane Avenger R5, again, but here's the thing, you got plenty. You're looking at tier 2 minimum crits with a small chance to go into tier 3. Diminishing returns in Warframe are not a thing, they never have been, but math has diminishing returns in the sense that the more you add of the same multiplier, the less you're gonna be getting out of it, so bear that one in mind. Fire rate, I like fire rate, you like fire rate, everybody likes fire rate, sure, why not? Arcane acceleration, if I can bloody find it, there you go, 90% fire rate on crit, plenty of crits, we're gonna be going like so. Panzer Vulpophila for the Vital Procs, or if you don't like the Panzer Vulpophila, you can go for any Sentinel you want. Just make sure that on that Sentinel's weapon, you got the 4 Vigilante mod for the 20% chance to increase critical strikes to the next tier. So, let's test the weapon like so. Honestly, at this point, it seems hardly fair to the targets, and I wish I could spawn higher level than this, but there you go, my friends. And when I mean high level, I don't mean 200, I mean thousands. Give me enemies in the thousands in the Simulacrum, so I may have even more fun. Empower for Mirage, or free ability for a stupidly high damage increase. One more time, for the ever so lovely Kaboom clones. This is not stacked, let's see what we can do unstacked. The un- oh wait, I forgot the headshot stuff. Hold on, I forgot the headshot stuff. Headshot, there you go, that's good enough. Oh Jesus. I haven't done the- oh. I haven't done the test with Mirage up until this point, this is the first time I do it. Dude, I mean, what more do you want? Well, what can you ask for more? You got ammo, you got explosions, you got ease of use, you got fire rate, you can bombard them with a million bloody explosions if you want to. Look at this. What more do you want? This is it. This is the new meta. For the time being, that is. As always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe for weekly recommendations on the brand new Arcane Adapters and builds for everything.
You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, consider supporting us via Patreon. There's going to be a link in the upper right portion of the screen right about now. I'll catch you guys in the next one.